And welcome back to the Jason Show Home Edition. Well, I was recently asked on a show, I think one of the last shows before the apocalypse here, um, what's been one of the greatest residual things that have come from doing the Jason Show? And it's actually, and my answer was my next guest. Um, I said one of the craziest things that's ever happened as a result of this show was the real friendship, not the BS TV like, oh, hi, uh, a real relationship, <laughs> an instant friendship with our next guest. Here she is. Here's a photo of her debut on our show where we literally saw each other backstage and it was like, okay, we're friends now. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us from, I believe, her bedroom or extra bedroom in New York, it's Paige Davis, everyone. Hi, you, you, are, you are incorrect. First of all, we do have a really, really solid friendship because one, I'm still in my pajamas. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, I haven't even showered yet, I'm, which is sad because it's like 1 p.m. for me here in not New York. I am in Avalon, New Jersey. Oh, okay. I'm down the shore. My dad, Adam, my stepdad, and Patrick had had said even way back when, when there was like, we were had concerns about potentially terrorist attacks or when we were dealing with the, the bird flu might be happening and all of that. It's like, you know, we should consider like escaping to Avalon if we can, because it's a lot more remote. There's, nobody lives here in the winter at all. Yeah. It's a summer town only. And so it's just, it's remote and it's not crowded. And so that's what we did. So we've been here. We came down early. Like, but, like as soon as Broadway shut down, we came. Uh, escaping to Avalon, Paige, that sounds like a Hallmark movie, doesn't it, girl? Sounds it like does. a Lifetime it movie. <laughs> it really, really yeah. does. Hi, uh, but anyway, look at my hair. Okay. Are you going to show it? Oh, I love you. This is. Oh, my God. Look at. <laughs> girl. And you were saying nobody believed you. You've been telling nobody people believes. for years that you're really I went gray. white. I went white years ago. I don't know why. I mean, I think probably uh, it's like a hereditary thing, I guess. And so I've been dying my hair for years for that reason. I feel like I should have went ahead and gone white when I was in my 20s if it had happened that early i think you can pull it off but when you're 50 you're kind of in that nebulous like if you're 20 you can have white hair but otherwise you need to probably wait until you're close to like 65 yeah like but one day Fon i'm gonna Jane rock Fonda just did it at 80 yeah there you go yeah and she still looks younger than i do no okay <laughs> so when was Paige? so when was the last time your hair has been hair. touched by a professional six weeks yeah but it grows really fast too. I mean, it's yeah. That's just that's oh. that's a lot of growth. Look at weeks. that girl. <laughs> Look, I love it. I love you. So I love tell you. Me, okay, so you're doing the show every day. Yeah. From home, you're doing radio from home too. No, so I do the radio show from the actual radio building they're keeping it very minimal like my co-host alexis she just had a baby so she's home out of an abundance of caution so two of us are in the studio in separate rooms and then two of us are uh in our homes then i get done with the radio show so when you so are you not concerned about like maybe you don't have that many cases in minneapolis but so you're going into the station every day yeah and touching where everybody else touched or how do you girl i am my new my new i have a mask uh which i know nurses i know i always like to no, say no no you need everybody needs one yeah i know it's not foolproof but i have that and my new accessory page i don't go anywhere now i have disinfectant wipes when i go th to a doorknob i i try to do an abundance of caution i'm not real nervous there um because they're being so safe uh and then i just stay here and then i come home and then what we're doing here, um, I'm in our my extra bedroom, our, our podcast studio, and I have a light, I have a master control thing on my iPad and a background, and I tape both of our new shows kind of in a row. So I have this interview with you, then I do another one, another one, another one, and, and yeah, I, so. I, I need that light, you look good. I, I, I just got this. Oh, you have natural light. light, girl, you have natural, natural light. light. Okay, so now I need the real tea. Yeah. Okay. 
you're quarantined. Well, no, you're leaving to go to work sometimes. So maybe it's not so hard on you and Colin, but like, what's that been like? Okay. What's this situation? Let's just be real. I mean, yeah, you know, come on. Pa I want to know. Paige and I are always like on text. <laughs> we are always, I'll be real, real. And he won't mind me saying this. It is because I think it helps for people to talk about it. So I think if people are watching, um, you know, it's, it's hard. I mean, it's, it is difficult. Um, because we are very different. Um, I'm an only child and Colin is not. And I like my alone time. And it, that isn't so much of an important thing for Colin. So it is a struggle, but, but it's been nice, you know, at the same time. And, you know, he, he has to leave the house sometimes for work. Um, and he's so respectful about it. So it's been all right. It's been challenging. Um, but, you know, you know what I think of Paige? I'm just grateful I think of the parents that live oh like God. in apartments with little oh my kids. God. Oh my God. I, oh all my of God. you watching that are in the right page, don't you feel? Oh my God, oh. totally. Why do you have kids? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I really, I really get that. And, and, you know, there are some, I even feel for the parents who are just home with their little kids and are homeschooling. Yes. Then you have parents who are actually home doing their own jobs and homeschooling. Yeah. Um, and it's not that somebody is not is incapable of doing that, but it but overnight the paradigm shifted. So you're expected to like radically change how you handle yourselves, your relationships, your marriage, your kids, your own work, your own everything. It's so fast. And you know, people can rise to occasions very easily. And if that is your situation and it's your normal, you can be strong. But when it comes at you out of the blue, oh my gosh. I, I, I literally can't imagine if I had like a three-year-old right now pulling on me constantly. No, I have, I have such, I mean, you know, Oprah used to always say, you know, it's the hardest job ever. I have such respect because you, you laid it out perfectly. These men and women still have to go to work. You know, sometimes they, you know, if they're essential workers, then they got to come home and spend seven hours homeschooling. I, I, I can't imagine. So that's why. Or they're trying to work from home and then also homeschool. But I will say this. I've said this numerous times as well. For these kids, they don't know of pandemic. They don't know. They know this has been the best time of their lives. Three-year-olds, four-year-olds, six-year-olds, six-year-olds, eight-year-olds, 20 years from now are going to look back on this year or year and a half or whatever and you'd be like, that was the greatest time of my life. Because unless they're, God forbid, in an abused situation, but I'm just talking about your typical family. And I also feel bad, you know, and then on the other end, you know, we were so blessed. I also feel bad for the seniors in high school that, you know what I mean? Oh. I have, I feel so oh, bad. That I, yeah. It's just, it's, I mean, all of that, the ripple effect is, is big, but you know what? They've, it is a shame, but they'll, it's okay. It's not the worst. Yeah, they'll, and a lot of schools are doing so many things to try to, you know, make up for it. So I just, I always think about them. Uh, okay. I lost my uncle. That was the hard, really hard thing. He died of COVID and um, I've, it's been a struggle, not just because he passed away because he was older and I thought it probably would happen with so anyway. Um, because of his health and his situation. But uh, the fact that he went from COVID meant that he went like instantaneously. And because it happened during this time, even if it hadn't been COVID, I was unable to be with him. Oh. So this is like, this is like my father. He, this is my, my aunt and my uncle are like my parents. And, you know, to know that he was alone and, that I couldn't say goodbye and I couldn't hug him one last time. I mean, there's a, even though I don't have COVID and I'm not sick from COVID. And even though my uncle was of an elderly age and on the decline anyway, it it's robbing you of so much more than just your life yeah. or, you know, just your health. Um, so it's, it's, it's rough. And, and, and everybody's different. Yeah. Like everybody's, bar is different just because you know for a senior who's missing their prom and their graduation that's the worst thing that's happening for them absolutely for me losing my uncle is the worst things happening for me for someone else it's their spouse yeah you know or their child or 
I mean, for everybody, it's different. My mom was just telling me about a quote and I posted it. Quit saying we're all in the same boat. We're all in the same storm. I love But we're not all in the same boat. I Oh, I did see that on your, I love that. Yes, I saw that on your Instagram. I love that. I love that. So powerful, right? So true. Will you hold on? I let's let's take a break and then we're gonna I gotta chit chat a little bit more. More with Paige in just a second. Back in a moment. I love you. And welcome back. Okay, just a few more minutes with my buddy Paige. Okay, Paige. Well, I was just I was rambling. I was rambling. No, no, no. So I just wanted to say the reason I thought of that is because like you and I don't have kids. So for us, the struggle might be with our spouse or so you know, but everybody's got their own. Thing. Yeah, that's all I meant. Oh, is, I'm glad. No, yeah, that's I, what made me think of that. I yeah. haven't talked to someone that is directly affected. So I'm glad, please. You're you're helping a lot of people. In our last like minute, though, I want to end on on a happy. Uh, so how you doing otherwise? Like, how's the TS? How's Patrick? Give me some good news, girl. <laughs> Give me some good news. Um, it's I. Oh, God, do I have any good news? <laughs> <laughs> um. I'm doing great. I mean, I'm I'm with my parents. Um, we have routine. Um, we, so uh, Sophie, that's her previous dog. Georgie's walking on a leash. We finally took the time to like get her to walk on. She's walking like a champ. She is like I was saying about kids are going to look back on this time and be like greatest time of my life. Same thing for my dog. She's like the whole pack is home. I'm long like she's ecstatic. Um, she's in a, a house with. She's like running all over the place. And she's thrilled. I think it's harder on Patrick because it's my family. And I think he feels a little under the thumb of us here. And he, I think it's harder on him. But for, for me, I, I, I'm doing great. I'm two blocks from the ocean. You know, we were able, we're able, like I said, it's so remote here. We can go out and walk whenever we want. It's perfectly safe to just be out in the air. Yeah. Um, which is very different, obviously, than all my friends back home in New York City. So. We need it. I mean, we're very, very fortunate. Yes. Yes, we are. I love you, sweetheart. What a great way to end the show. I love you. We, you gotta, we, we gotta, we gotta do this again. And just like, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do like a, a on air hairdo. Well, I'll, cause I'll show my gray too. Yeah, I like it very much. But he's stay <laughs> Got, safe and happy. I love you. I love you too. Paige, everybody, the great Paige Davis. That's going to do it for us. Stay safe. Go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. See you next week, everybody.